start with a small introduction. When I say uh, no reality transcendences, I said, oh, it's, it's perfect to say something about my vision about imaginary. Because I try in the time to find on, uh, a new kind to interpret uh, interpreting the idea of imaginary, starting from um, all uh, put it together on uh, holistic vision, and uh, uh, I try to let uh, the traditional idea of imaginary and to find somewhere into the uh, intersection between uh, epistemology and the theory of imaginary, a new kind of, uh, of idea. So, this is the reason uh, why I uh, talk today about um, uh, the rational imaginary. In the traditional uh, point of view, the rational imaginary is something in a conflict. Why? Because the imaginary it is related to the idea of fantasy, of what is fantasy, fantasy and uh, rationality is discursive, it's not a fantasy. It's relating more to a describe of a reality. So, for this I want to present my premises. Uh, first idea is the definition of uh, imaginary and uh, I'll try to read this. Imaginary is the sum of all images that manifest of the human conscience are relatedly of their complexity, they are simple or complex. Clarity, they are clear or ambiguous. Source, they are representation or imagination. Mode of communication, they are visual, discursive, numeric, symbolic, etc. Which is a comprehensive individual structure amplified at social level. Actually, imaginary is any kind of knowledge. Imaginary is a cognitive ego as a whole, integrating discursive elements whose propose a image. So, if I uh, start from this uh, premise, I try to, uh, I have here a small graphic, I can not see it, where I try to represent the idea of conscience and I consider we have two levels, the conscious level and unconscious level of imaginary. Why I put it this in uh, two parts? Because uh, when I made the definition of imaginary, I relate the idea of imaginary with the image, not with imagination. Why? Because in medieval point of view, the image, the imagination is the same thing and actually in classical Latin, the imagination have to uh, present two perspectives. One perspective is about fantasy, what we create with our mind. But the other perspective is uh, very simple, it's uh, what we know perception. Okay, so if and in medieval uh, philosophy is not any kind of difference between perception and fantasy. So, if we put this together, I realized we didn't have the differences to the essence of the images which, between perception and fantasy. Uh, I want to, to take here an example. For a monk, the um, a revelation, it is a reality. A reality, it is a perception, a direct perception. For somebody outside, it's just something from imagination. So, here is just one point of interpreting this, uh, this idea. So, I have perception. After that, I have a very, very, very small windows of attention here. Yes? I have very uh, a very small numbers of knowledge that I have in my uh, focus. Uh, uh, I'm conscious just from a very small number of information. After that, I have a lot of processes uh, unknown 
and of course after that I have uh, unconscious. I think there are cognitive processes to put it together all these images and I have uh, often used information that are activated uh, very easy. I have active and reflexive information more deeper and deeper. They are put it together into unconscious and passive imaginary. Starting from this, I structure the idea of imaginary to five levels. Imaginary of perception, social imaginary, linguistic imaginary, rational imaginary, and uh, unconscious imaginary. The traditional uh, ideas was focused to unconscious imaginary, but I return to the other part of imaginary. Okay, but it's a rational imaginary. Everybody from uh, us. Uh, seeking to explain the world, the universe, and one the moment in history, using the language, the image about the world is organized rationally, and its description gets objectively and logically consistent. This is the rational imaginary. Yes? All these images, uh, logical structure, became an uh, image about the uh, world, using the discursive uh, uh, ideas, using a uh, language, starting from common language until the formalization, abstract formalization, etc. If I have this kind of uh, rational imaginary, we have cognitive processes well known. They put it together the image and to make this imaginary in a form. First, of course, is perception. What makes this perception? I take from the image, from immediately, from the environment. Uh, the second aspect, very important, this image had some emotional shadows. These emotional shadows put it together the images. Yes? Uh, the images, they are not structured just logical, but using this kind of uh, emotional shadows. Uh, of course, I have, to, starting from these emotional shadows, I have two different uh, processes that drive it. Some processes unconscious and some processes conscious. The unconscious is like uh, Freudian reflection put it all in the deep of our uh, mind. Uh, the conscious process, processes are very simple and create rational images. Of course, rational images use the processes like generalization, another process to put it together the image and to compare the images. It's not a generalization, but it's some kind of press together the images and to create a symbol. It's first step to create a symbol. Uh, what, what is a symbol? A symbol uh, means an image, a lot of images put, put it together, compress, and metaphorically, using meta metaphors, uh, put it together and I find an um, idea or a word uh, regarding this idea uh, com compressed. Of course, after that symbols, Dylan became rational. He became step by step unconscious. And from there, from the uh, level of unconscious, when is activated, is activated with the entire uh, ideas with the uh, entire uh, images. Classification, generalization and uh, using the abstract notion, there are other processes using to put it together images and to create a rational imaginary. Where we can find this rational imaginary? 
and I will, I will try to make a relation between the object of knowledge and the form as rational, imaginary. And I want to give some examples. When I have a, a reflection about absolute, I create metaphysics. When I have reflection and my object of analysis is the text, I create hermeneutics. When uh, the analysis is, is uh, yourself, we develop anthropology, psychology, and the other. When the analysis is nature, I have some scientific imaginary from uh, 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 sense of nature. Mathematics, for example, is a pure kind of rationality. Why it's pure? Because in mathematics we lose the basis, we lose the relation with the uh, environment and create in uh, image in itself. And of course it's very interesting the analysis of science and the reflection of the science where we create epistemology. I want to put it and to make to give some example about different forms of rational imaginary. And I want also to uh, underline something very interesting if this kind of interpretation can be used in uh, regarding religion. Why? Because a religion is very, very difficult to avoid in this kind of view. Uh, I want to, uh, to say something uh, before this. The idea of imaginary is not a negative one. Actually, it's what we know. We know Everything we know, it is an image about the world, in different kind of uh, So, regarding religion, I start with the axiom. There is not an image, uh, image of absolute. It's not a concrete image of absolute. And we didn't have a real image of absolute. What we can make with the religion. So, I put it every step. I have, first level, the imaginary of perception is transformed in direct knowing of the God. It is the direct relation, and it is the first level of knowing the God. The social imaginary uh, means, in the aspect of religion, the development of religion's community, and the first level of uh, imaginary, like rules, goals, moral perspectives. Linguistic imaginary, there are rituals, songs, prayers. Rational imaginary, there are dogma, hermeneutics of uh, sacred texts, metaphysical analysis, and the other. And of course, po uh, unconscious imaginary, it is magic, pseudo religiosity, and the other. These levels regarding religion uh, create one principal idea. Every kind of uh, imaginary in religion uh, create or direct me to the first level, the direct knowing. Everything else, it is more, more, more uh, uh, increases and uh, we lose the first level. So, I think that is it. Final idea. Thank you, dear Professor <coughs> Dan Sumbotin, for this presentation and for your guidance. Uh, tries to not prevent us but warn us uh, from uh, trying to achieve this direct relationship with God apart from. Uh, from our social responsibilities <coughs> towards the neighbor. So, you say you love God, so you say you have this direct relationship to God, but if you focus on that, with that while losing touch with your neighbor, the needs of your neighbor, then you're actually, you know, you love an idol. There, there is this, uh, 
this will depend on relationships. So, so, so would, you, would you maybe concede that uh, in Christian theology this process may not be as simple? Uh, and, and there might be other currents, other ways of thinking about having a direct relationship with God that can be manifested precisely in me living for the neighbor, being free to sacrifice for my neighbor. Um, if I, um, uh, if I understand well, you said the, the idea of loving my neighbor is the sense of Christianity. Uh, I am totally agree, and this is the first level of my neighbor, to transform the relation in society to a love for the God, to a relation with the God, and to make an interpretation regarding <coughs> This kind of community is not a social community, but is a religious one, and is a um, first level of, of uh, perception, not the second. Okay. So uh, this is the reason why uh, I think uh, this is the uh, idea. And what you said to the last of your uh, analysis, you said, oh, uh, if I love an idol, to love an idol is the imaginary because it's some kind of encounter, it is something abstract and actually I think I think it's uh, some kind of uh, pseudo religiosity is there. It's not a real religion to love uh, a symbol. We didn't know we didn't want to love a symbol. We didn't love a symbol, an image. We must to keep the first level and the first level is to uh, have the direct perception, not this uh, uh, last level of uh, perception. We need the symbols to help us. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, so, uh, actually, actually, in uh, Orthodox iconography, I didn't uh, love the icon. Yes, I. I, I want to have. I want to have the direct, direct relation with the idea.
combined with perception, but perception only is, it, it cannot be. Perception only, because ima imagination is always in between. In between the body and the mind, intellect, how you want to call it, according to the system you refer to, but you don't refer to any system and to all systems. So that's why I think there is a need here for clarifying the concept you are using. So what is perception? What is consciousness and unconsciousness? Conscious and unconscious. In what perspective? I mean, I couldn't understand. I didn't really understand. Yes, so at this one my mind. Yes, my mind. Okay. Um, actually, in this presentation, in this presentation, I tried to focus the book. So uh, this is the reason I was uh, a little ambiguous. This uh, aspect.
we can know. So, what really we can know, image. Okay, where is the difference uh, between my uh, vision regarding imaginary, okay, my vision regarding imaginary and the phenomenology, because the phenomenology is uh, the same thing. And uh, the difference is uh, in uh, the optimistic point of view of phenomenology, because the phenomenology finally wants to cope to find uh, uh, the, put the pure object, find the reality behind. And if I had a method, right, in past process, if I have a method, I can know the reality. In my vision, we can, it's not possible to know the reality. What is possible is to keep our, uh, our imaginary uh, very close with the some of the first levels and to be conscious of about the idea what I create is just an interpretation of the reality it's just an image of reality so uh, also after that I have another part of the ontology of imaginary where I present the imaginary light on uh, reality itself like uh, the third level of uh, a focus uh, of the ontology to the uh, first levels of things, first level, third level uh, reality. So it's very, uh, very quick. It's a presentation. Um, I think my, my question is probably the flip side of Madea's, which is that she was talking about this notion of the pre, uh, the kind of, sorry, the, the, the intelligible, rational representation apart from sensory, and mine would be the opposite because I gathered from like, when you were discussing that the, the, uh, the image is perceptual, that there was a kind of post-Kantian context yeah. there, right? And so my question is from the side of Kant, uh, or in relation to this, the, the faculty of imagination in the Kantian context, um, the, perceptual, the perceptual nature of it is receiving sense data that is pre-conceptual, right? And so then his issue is how to, dis how to discuss the reconciliation of the sense data with conceptuality or maybe in the third critique with rationality. So my question would then be, is there something, is there any kind of perception that is, that is uh, I mean, in your presentation you, you went very quickly into discussing this as a, as a rational form, and then the top level as being the direct, the direct knowledge being rational in nature. And so my question would be, is it not possible that, that it's irrational in nature, that, it's, that, that it lacks that, in fact, mediation through reason? Uh, so that, that top level maybe it resembles more closely the imagination itself as just merely receiving sense data that it's not yet been put into. So I don't know if I've explained my question very well, but I suppose my it related to the idea of what it, an image is and whether it's already um, has kind of where, where, yeah, where, how rationality relates to the image essentially. Actually, uh, the, yes, yes. Uh, First, uh, related to, uh, to the Kant. Um, I prefer in opposition with the Kant idea of knowing before, counting before. Uh, I prefer the Piaget vision, uh, where we have some kind of empirism and where everything is uh, put together to the true. relation with the society of knowledge who already have it and to construct step by step uh, our, uh, our reality. So I'm uh, not a Kantian in uh, that direction. The other part of uh, what you said, I uh, totally agree with you. There are a lot, a lot of information uh, behind us and around us and uh, I didn't have the possibility to have a clear, a clear image about this. But uh, also we had a lot of information that are not very clear in our mind. They are, they are somewhere there and they are put together and influence our uh, clear image. And uh, we have, this is about the, what is unconscious. We have some kind of this unconscious is not an Freudian vision, but it is 
uh, this kind of subconscious or unconscious where the images, I mean, use images that work together and influence us without any control or work, without a real uh, cognitive uh, so or conscious control. So, this, uh, there are this kind of uh, images. Yes, thank you. Thank you, the professor. That's and 